Welcome to Gorilla Physics, where we just care about you understanding your physics more, so you're gaining confidence, so you enjoy it, so you do better in your exams. So this is an example of eddy current braking, or electromagnetic braking. And this is because large vehicles like lorries and trucks, they have much more energy involved when they're traveling, especially if they're traveling downhill, then that extra energy means loads of friction is needed to stop them with traditional kind of clamp braking. Okay, so the brakes heat up a lot and you get what's called brake fade. So they're fitted with eddy current brakes or electromagnetic brakes. And uh, you may observe this if you um, ever get going to coach, you'll sometimes see the driver slowing it down without the, the foot pedals, just with a little lever that he's got next to his steering wheel. Um, and that is the electromagnetic braking. So I'm gonna show you this spinning disc and I'm gonna show you the difference with or without um, the electromagnetic braking going. Gorilla physics! <laughs> so what we've got here is our metal spinning disc. It's not a ferrous metal, it's not a magnetic metal. That's an important thing to understand. Um, and we've got these C cores, a clamped either side, that's a C core, laminated soft iron C core. And around that we've got coils of wire. And these coils are, well this one has up to 240 coils, but these ones in here have up to 2,400 coils. So many coils of wire, and maybe if you know a bit about electromagnetism, you know more coils means a bigger magnetic field strength when I put a current through those coils. So I'm first of all gonna spin the, um, the disc without having any current through those coils. And I've put a little bit of green paper, I hope you can see that, so you can kind of get an idea of how fast it spins. I'm just kind of going to, each time, going to try and give it the same kind of spin. But it's really about how quickly it slows down or not. So that was without any current at all through the coils. So that's without any current at all through the coils. Now I'll start it on a, a low voltage, this is just 3 volts, and maybe you can start to see the difference, up to 6 volts, around to 9, and hopefully you can see even with that same torque that it's slowing down much more rapidly. So this is with no current going through the coils. This is 3 volts, 6 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts. I think you can clearly see there's a big difference between off and 12 volts. So what's actually happening here? Well, first of all, I'll tell you what's not happening. I said this is not, this is not ferromagnetic. It's not made of iron. You can see I've got my super magnets. A little bit of magnetism there, but, but not a lot. Okay, these super magnets are very strong magnets. Um, so what, that's not the case. It's not just this magnetic field that's set up when I put a current through the coil is reacting with uh, a magnetic material, okay? So what's actually happened is like a transformer, this magnetic field is causing a current inside the rotating disc. And then those currents, they have magnetic fields around them. And those magnetic fields are reacting with the magnetic fields set up by the, the uh, C cores. So it's one of those ones where actually, uh, it's a little bit counterintuitive. You have to think this happens and this happens and this happens. The current causes a magnetic field in the cores. That magnetic field causes a current in the disc. And then those, mag those currents in the disc have magnetic fields around them. So those magnetic fields interact with the magnetic fields to cause a force, which the net force is opposing the motion. So an interesting thing to do would be to actually somehow measure that. Maybe use a video and a little marker to measure how many rotations per second it's doing and the rate of deceleration of this thing. Um, 
you could then vary the input voltage and see how effective the eddy current braking was. Um, however, it's quite difficult with this piece of apparatus to get a standard torque. So I'm trying to get it spinning at the same rate each time, but that's going to be pretty uncertain. You can see each time it's not quite getting the same. So, but you could compare the rates, especially if you're using something like a video analysis. Now I will try it just now, the difference on AC versus DC. And I'm going to start on a low voltage as well. So let's just see DC on 12. Now when I use it as AC and I'm powering both sides, then there's going to be a slight transformer effect. So I'm, I'm a little bit concerned. We'll start down at one volt. Just to see, is it more effective when it's AC? I'm happy now. I can go up a bit. No, it's, it's no more effective. In fact, I might say it's less effective. Which is useful in lorries because then they can run their electromagnetic braking systems just off a DC battery. Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. That really helps me be more useful to more people.